Pisces, it's me, Stormy, and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2020, where Pisces this month is busy, but I also feel like it's a really nice, joyful month for you as well, amidst all of the disturbances that come with eclipse energies and that come with a season of 60% of our planets, including your ruling planet, being in retrograde. So... Good things are happening. Things are shifting. It may feel a little delayed this month, but I ultimately feel like this is a lovely, joyful month for you with so much happening in your fifth house, which is the house of joy. It's the house of expression, play. Your joy needs your attention. So let's jump in and let's talk about what's happening this month. Right at the beginning of the month on the second, we've got Mercury, our communication energy, slowing down and coming into a shadow phase before he retrogrades on the 18th. Now this is gonna light up your fifth house space, okay? So as the shadow time begins in the fifth house area, joy, self-expression, play. It's also the house of children or things connected to our children. These issues, these things that need your attention could start to grab your attention, even if it's something from the past. I mean, I think it's such a big deal with Cancerian energy here that even for your children or your inner child, however you'd like to express that, there is a redefining happening um, for sure. So, It'll be something to be mindful of. Either way, things start to slow down and your attention may be grabbed on these issues right here at the beginning of the month. Now on the 5th, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse in the energy of Sagittarius and this lights up your 10th house. The full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There is a shift that is absolutely necessary, okay? So don't be surprised, especially at the level of government agencies, regulations, industry standard changes, if over the next six months you don't see some very big changes at work. And even if you're retired it's like work that you do in the world what are you giving to the world who are you showing up and being known as in the world there will definitely be shifts indicated here over this next six months now on the 18th mercury actually takes that retrograde in cancer until july but on the on the just few days following that the sun enters into the energy of cancer bringing in the summer solstice or winter depending on where you are in the world and then it's followed by a new moon solar eclipse which actually i think is so brilliant in this area for you because mercury is taking you back revise re-edit reconnect re-image re-imagine re-look at this area re-look at your joy or the people or the places and the things in your life that need self-expression that are trying to express even if this is the children right even if this is your child if this is your business needing another expression of itself it's right here and these culmination of energies here that have a retrograde and then beaming luminaries pushing into this area it's saying let's begin something new this is a significant energy for you it's about your emotional life and joy the emotional life of those around you and joy what makes them feel secure there is security there is imagination there is freedom in joy and i think that all of these energies um push you in that direction. Now with this solar eclipse, because it is at zero degrees of cancer, for some of you truly you could just be having a baby or you are needing to invest financially in children or a new baby or a new conception of something, which could also be a new business. It could also just be a vacation, okay? But whatever it is, it's gonna take about six months to fully bring that beginning to flourishing. On the 23rd, your ruling planet Neptune is going to step into retrograde. Now, this is a redefining of you for sure. You are redefining how you show up, what you believe of yourself, your own creativity. Again, a Neptune retrograde makes me say Pisces. Pull into your joy. Where are you in your joy, right? But Neptune retrograde also distorts reality for us. Instead of having this place where we can go and kind of tap out a little bit as humans, Pisces, it forces you to the forefront. You are in heavy contact with reality, with the heavy concreteness. And that can sometimes be a little bit problematic. Whenever the ruling planet goes retrograde, we're kind of like, oh, hold on a minute. You know what I mean? So if reality seems a little distorted, if you in your reality seem a little distorted just back off surrender to win you don't have to push so hard here aim towards the level of creativity and joy and that will actually help you i think reground your feet um into the reality that's happening right here. But it could certainly be a position too where I think if you've been involved in relationships, business, or anything else you have been connected to that is not in your best interest, Neptune will help this dissolve out or you'll be in such concrete reality that you're like, ooh, 
this does not feel good at all. I am done with it. So whatever it is, the retrograde is beautiful to help you release, but also to re-image and to reimagine who's the next version of Pisces we're going to meet. The example I always use is that a chair, before it was a useful material, we can see it and interact with a chair, it was just an idea. So create your idea, and I look forward to re-meeting you in November when your ruling planet comes back online. On the 25th, we see Venus coming out of retrograde in the energy of Gemini. Now, this is going to be at five degrees of Gemini, and it's in your fourth house. Home, family, real estate, property, your connection to women, your ancestry, your lineage. Ah, the ancestors have been speaking in high volume over the last couple months. So I have no doubt that with Venus and Gemini here, the beauty of the information you've been receiving, whether it be from the ancestors, from reading, from other people, has been abundant. Now, Venus was also retrograde here, so you were re-looking at the value of information that you have, that you receive, and that you share. Your relationships, how you show up and you communicate with those in your own home. This has been a big time of review here to bring some rebalancing, to bring some beauty and to bring some magnetism to this area. Now with Venus coming direct, if you did need to make repairs to your home or do something to improve home, including home here, this is energy you definitely have in your back pocket. It's a lot of emotional, um, um, a lot of emotionally intellectual but secure energy emotional intelligence is kind of the word i think comes online for me here so you'll be able to apply that going forward which magnetizes this area of your life and i do think too because neptune is retrograde it's funny it's like well i need money to fix my bathroom in my house but i'm waiting and saving for it and neptune retrograde actually just delivers it to your front door Right? It's an interesting kind of energy when it rule, runs between the worlds. So I look forward to seeing what improvements or adjustments you make with Venus out of retrograde. Now, Mars comes into the energy of Aries on the 28th, and this is in your second house. This could also be where that money is coming from because Mars in Aries is comfortable at full power and is taking instinctive, decisive action. So trust your instincts, trust your intuition here in your second house. You probably have a fair amount of good emotional intelligence around your finances. But also if you're not sure and you feel like you're gonna make that impulsive buy or you're gonna impulsively give away all of your stuff, you guys do that. Check with somebody, just run it by somebody really quick, but your instincts may be telling you, hey, we need to nest, we need to clean out, we need to bring something in. But the question will be, why? right? Trust your instincts, but also run it by somebody else so you can maybe see a version of the why and then it might make a little bit more sense. Certainly here though, if you need to take aggressive and assertive action with your money, this energy will help you do that. If you needed to ask for that raise, this energy will also do that because Mars is happy to fight for what he believes that you deserve or what they desire, okay? As we close out this month, Pisces, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto coming together again for the second of three conjunctions that they will make this year. We saw the first one happen in April. Now they're coming together again and we'll see it come to flourishing and culmination at the end of the year in November. Now, as these two came together in April, this is in your 11th house, friends, social groupings, organizations, technology, causes, right? Like there in April, it was asking you and giving you a focused, driven energy to begin something here in this area. It's showing you the wisdom of why you can't go it alone. The wisdom of why an alignment with maybe a group or being social is actually in your best interest. Also, the wisdom of why you would die off and stop doing it the way you were doing it. What's the value? you in the wisdom of the evolution here. Now, as they come together again in retrograde, you've likely walked into some challenges, right? They're here together in retrograde. So you're going to relook at this area. Have you made progress here? Have you been learning the lessons? Have you been allowing the wisdom and evolution to happen? And they're going to also show you wherever maybe this has been stuck at a social level for you um, or where it just needs adjustment, that you have an immense capacity and capability to overcome the challenges that you're meeting here, right? You can do it effectively, efficiently, and be successful in this area. And so they kind of give you this delicious push to continue to see the wisdom and work with the um, evolution and transformation that's happening here in your social grouping. And certainly sometimes just around your technology, maybe the next portion of your life really will be done in heavy technology and you've got to get out of the way and learn it and allow it to come into your life or allow yourself to develop in these social um, spaces, right? So whatever it is, these two are coming together as astrological helpers for you here to let you know you've got what it takes to make this transformation. 
All right, Pisces, I think it's going to be a brilliant and beautiful month. You're a nice, mutable water energy. Try not to worry and stress too much. The eclipses are big energy. So if you can allow yourself with that mutable energy time to have some downtime so you're not just vibrating on worry, I think that's a really, really good thing. Nurture yourself, care for yourself. And I look forward to seeing you and meeting you and greeting you along the way as you welcome in these changes. I also truly hope, Pisces, that you're enjoying the eat and great collaborations that are coming here we are having a good time with them they are developing and kind of turning into i don't even know what they're going to be but something good for us i just i just know it so i hope you're enjoying them let me know if you are down in the comment section below all right pisces like this video comment share subscribe i love you i love you my beautiful fish and i will see you next month bye